I wonder if the students who are with Asunder are relieved that I've developed that formula for the area of a rectangle. Hey Sadie, how are you? I'm fine, thanks, and you? I'm very good, thank you. So tell me, like, hmm, what do I want to know about you? I want to know where you like to hang out, uh, what's your favourite thing you enjoy doing, your favourite subject, and why? Okay, I love <laughs> hanging out at Brightwater. Um, that's my water comments. Uh -huh. And my favorite thing, like, okay, I love go karting with friends. And my favorite subject, I think, is English. Okay, why, why English? It's easiest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's fair enough. But you got a question for us, right? Yeah. Go ahead. You made such a strange remark. How can you use the formula for the area of the rectangle to determine whether the area for the area of the triangle? Well, let's see if Anna's got the answers. I don't know. Ah, a critical mind. I love that. And I'm going to love showing you how we can use the formula for the area of a rectangle to determine a formula for the area of a triangle. Where to get started? I need a triangle. Ah, here I've got one. Well, two to be precise. Two identical triangles. I'm going to use two triangles just to make sure that what happens next makes sense. To perform this demonstration, I'm going to take one of my triangles and I'm going to select one of the three vertices. In this case, I'm going to use this one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to construct a perpendicular line from that vertex to the opposite side of the triangle. This is probably best done using a set square as I'm doing now. So there is a perpendicular line constructed from the vertex of the triangle to the opposite side. We sometimes use the word altitude to describe that line. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to fold this triangle so that this vertex, this point, comes to lie on the base of that perpendicular. Let me show you again. I'm going to fold it over so that that top lies on the base of the perpendicular. That is where the perpendicular touches the opposite side. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fold that very neatly and carefully over there. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this corner and I'm going to fold it in to that point over there, just like that. And I'm going to repeat that for the last remaining vertex. Pick it up, fold it over so that it careful. We might just need to use the set square to make sure that this works well. There we go. Neat fold. I fold that over and there it is. What you've just noticed, hap what you've just noticed here, namely that those three corners meet over here, will happen with absolutely any triangle. By folding the triangle in the way that I have, I have created a rectangle. A rectangle whose area is one half of the area of the original triangle. I think that's pretty convincing because if you think about it, this rectangle consists of two sides that are exactly equal to each other. And the rectangle has been made by folding in the triangle. So the rectangle has an area that is one half the area of the original triangle. Now, I know because of the work we did earlier how to determine the area of a rectangle. So let's determine that now. The area of the rectangle is equal to length times breadth. But what is the length of that rectangle? Well, the length of that rectangle, this side here, is one half this side of the triangle. Think about that. 
that part has been folded in half and that part has been folded in half. Now, in terms of our triangle, we refer to this side of the triangle, which lies at the bottom of the altitude, as the base of the triangle. So that is one half of the base. Now, what is the breadth of our rectangle? That is, what is this length over here? Well, that is one half of that line which we constructed earlier. Because look, when I fold it over, the line lies on top of itself. It's one half of that length. And that length, by the way, is called the height of the triangle, the perpendicular height of the triangle. So it's one half times base times one half times the perpendicular height of my triangle. And it remains for us to tidy that up. Now remember, we're interested in the area of the triangle. And we've said that the area of the triangle is two times the area of the rectangle. In other words, it is two times base divided by two multiplied by perpendicular height divided by two. And all of that simplifies to base times height divided by two. Sometimes we say that that is one half times the base multiplied by the height. I'd like you now to take just a moment and decide whether the derivation of that formula makes sense to you. In our next lesson, I want to use that same formula for the area of a rectangle to determine a formula for the area of a circle. Hmm. Till next time. Whoa, well, guys, I wish you were all here. Things are really interesting at Aurora. But anyway, while we have fun, you keep practicing, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye! Bye.